warm welcome again to Vibrant Growth, uh, January 16. A uh, minute of the classes are uh, getting filled up, so sign up early. And the new course would be Kingdom Core Value, which is very important. If you uh, run the company, get a group of like-minded believers. Yeah, one or two non-believers, okay, but the last large majority should be the believers that you can share your vision, your core value, uh, so that you can, as a sort, influence the rest of the people. God told us that uh, he wants us to be the salt of the earth. Not to be influenced, not to be a thermometer, but to be a thermostat. And, uh, okay, what's some of this exciting testimony just came fresh? Sudden increase through sewing. In the month of November 2017, I was prompted to sow a weekly miracle seed. Suddenly, the clients began to increase in two weeks, and there were 10 new jobs. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next testimony, Supernatural Breakthrough. Dear Pastor Joshua and Pastor Kerry, we have another breakthrough to share after attending our Kingdom Inheritance classes and also going to Grotto for prayers. My flat of 90 units, which was completed in 2008, still had a balance of 19 units unsold and we have actually given up on the sales as it was very difficult to get buyers. But praise be to, the, to God, two weeks ago, we suddenly received a letter saying that they wanted to buy 17 units from us. The balance two units they will take on the next year. Hallelujah. It is truly a supernatural miracle breakthrough for us. Thank you, Pastor Joshua and Pastor Kerry, for the lessons and the sermons reminding us that God is always in control as we focus on Him. All glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The next testimony is no lack even while sowing in dry season. Dear Pastor, my company declared that it would, be not, it would not be able to pay the employees regularly. Initially, it was manageable as the salary was credited once in a few months. But things got worse in 2017. I was in a dilemma about what to do. We decided not to give in to discouragement, but to rest in His love and to continue serving Him through various ministries and sowing what we could in the dry season. According to His word, we, we never had any lack throughout this famine. Throughout this famine period, he indeed is our Jehovah Jireh, and he kept ministering to us through the Sunday messages and manna. The vision for 2018 gave me something to claim and cling on to. We kept focusing on Jesus Christ and declaring that it would be a year of supernatural overflows. Even when the situation appeared to grow worse, we believed that the Lord was arranging things in our favor. In early 2018, our company got a project, and that was a definite miracle. Things didn't improve immediately. We attended Kingdom Dynamics and the lessons were a tremendous blessing to me as it helped me to cast my cares on Him and stay focused on His love. On September 9, the Lord astounded us through a prophetic word by our lead pastors in the Sunday service. It increased my faith to expect the impossible and that same month, the Lord enabled me to receive my salary arrears for 18 months. All glory to my Lord Jesus for watching over His word to perform it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for using our pastors to minister to us week after week, building our lives through the Word of God. Thank you for our zone pastor and to our care group family for their love. Amen. Yeah, give God a hand. Hallelujah. And uh, I think the message uh, today that God wants us to receive is sowing, uh, because this coming year is what year is that? Is the fruitful in gatherings, and you're not going to get in gathering you're not going to be a sowing. Sunday Menal is Haggai chapter 2 verse 19. You recall the testimony was just got it this week. The guy had been going through a dry season for I think a year or more without pay. And then prophetic word is given and he chose not to be discouraged, chose to sow whatever he has. Even in the dry season and boom, within that period of time, he got 18 months pay. And all the people say, yeah. Haggai 2 verse 19. I am giving you a promise now, while the seed is still in the barn. You have not yet harvested your grain and your grapevines, fig trees, pomegranates, and olive trees have not yet produced their crops. But from this day onward, I will bless you. Say from this day forward, I will bless you. I'm a Muslim because this is the year of the fruitful ingathering, and other people say, Amen. Amen.
Ayan. Hello everyone. Welcome home to RLC. If you're here for the first three times, do visit the Vineyard Lounge where you can receive a free gift from us and know more about our ministry here in RLC. I close my eyes and colors fly There's no hiding from your grace I can't deny your heart for mine And it's unreal and chase I was on the edge of deception Caught up in my own hesitation until your love took over me So I let go and I let love Show me life like it's supposed to be On a way to, you're a way to All the freedom I'll ever need Now I'm alive Oh, I, oh, I, oh I. When I Long see, how are you doing ah? Uh? Okay uh, I've been gaming lately. Oh hey, since you are free and it's the most amazing time of the year, why don't you join us for Snowblaze on the 15th of December? Come and meet new friends and we'll have special food. I heard uh, they have a uh, chocolate fountain, you know. Chocolate fountain? Uh? And snow. Wow, that's amazing. Of course, it's Snowblaze, of course we're gonna have snow, right? Nice, eh? I know, right? So, see you at Snowblaze! We dream of a strong local church, mighty in the grace of God, reaching out with great compassion, disciple and transform by the love of Christ. For weekly updates and sermon notes, you can download our app. Just search for Renewal Lutheran Church. Follow us on Instagram at Oasis of Care and a Blaze RLC. Father, we want to thank you for this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, rebuke and bind every foul wicked of the Spirit to go from here right now in Jesus' name. Your word may have free course in the midst of us and other people say. Amen. Yeah, this year is your year of what? Fruitful in gatherings. God wants us to bear much fruit. What is the key is that allow us to be cut. Doesn't mean <laughs> cutting your limb and the uh, year is to be lifted up. You recall that Greek word is not cut, cut, but to lift up. Just like those, you go to the vineyard in Australia or France, 
they lift up their branches away from the ground that will pollute and soil the branches so that we can bear more fruit. And then he prune. How do we prune? The word prune, remember in the Greek, is to be cleansed. Cleansed by the word of his grace to lift us up to what we can be. And of course, words of correction and sometimes also pruned by situation in life that causes us to be patient. The farmer plant the seed and patiently wait for it. And also we see how Jesus Christ said, want your fruit to remain. Now you could take away all the weeds, yeah, all the worry, all the anxiety, the deceitfulness of riches. Nothing wrong with riches, but there's some deceitfulness about riches that causes uh, to be so busy that we're not fulfilling God's purpose in our life. Yeah, put it this way, if you're too busy to serve, you're really too busy. And watch out for the barrenness of a fruitless life. We want to do something that impact for eternity. Not just one particular season, but for eternity. And uh, just talk about how we can be fruitful is to be rooted in Him. To remain in Him, be rooted in Him. Rooted in God's Word and also uh, rooted in the care group. You recall the amazing Californian redwood trees, the, the huge tree growing hundreds of feet and they may face forest fire. That is why they stand, even if the half of the uh, tree is gone, just a little stump. If it grow back again, survive for hundreds of years, not just survive but thrive, is because of the unique root structure. Not really that deep, but they interlock with one another. So intertwining with one another. So car group is very important. Uh, we just produced that little card for you to recap uh, what the care group can do for you. You go to the care group, not because for my sake, for the zone pastor's sake, like for your own benefit. You get connected. This little card we just produced, uh, the first blessing, get connected. You feel a sense of belonging. Even though the church is big, you feel you're in the smallest church because you get connected with people care and prayer for one another that's what care group do and practical sharing of the word of god emphasizing on the practical application of what we learn on sunday in our everyday life and also get to a practical sharing of the unique variety of food that malaysia can offer and of course de developing your life and eq yeah the relationship skills and developing your gifts and leadership skills so could it be fruitful Get involved. And if you don't uh, fill up a card to get involved, uh, indicate to us what you be involved, let us know. Today we'll talk about how you can hear God's voice by walking through the tabernacle again. This time round, focusing on how through the tabernacle we can learn to hear His voice. The ultimate purpose in our series, uh, this series of messages, the worship experience, is the restoration of the tabernacle of David. Acts tells us. Acts 15 verse 16. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. Well, the ultimate purpose of the worship experience that we may seek him. Why is it important that uh, we seek him? Because God has unique blessing for us in Exodus. Exodus 25 verse 22 And there I will meet with you and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat. And you know what? He speaks blessing, not condemnation. And you can see that in Numbers. Numbers 6 verse 24 to 27 Whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself will bless them. Wow, awesome, huh? Uh, whenever Aaron blesses the people, I will bless. The Aaron is a picture of Christ. And every time Christ blessed, I'm going to know God blesses. Every time your pastor, on behalf of the Lord, blesses you, God blesses you. Every time you, as a father or mother in the household, bless your children, I'm going to know God is blessing your children. So, the ultimate purpose of the tabernacle of David being restored, the worship experience, is not just about having a good time. It's about receiving blessing, hearing from Him, letting to hear His voice. So I'm going to share with you, take with you a journey through the tabernacle again. 
And from the tabernacle, uh, tabernacle, we can see how we can develop our heart, prepare our heart to hear his his voice. Seven ways uh, to prepare our heart. And the first item you will notice is the altar of the burnt sacrifice. When you come to the church, that is the altar of the burnt sacrifice, a cross. Look up on my left, you will see the cross. That is a picture of the altar. The altar of burnt sacrifice is a picture of the cross. Hebrews chapter 9 tells us. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption. Wow, we enter God's presence through not just ordinary animal, but with the blood of Christ. And first and foremost, to prepare our heart to hear His voice, we got to deal with guilt and condemnation. Sin should never drive you away from God's presence. Sometimes we did some bad thing, we don't feel good to come to God's presence. Hey, sin should never drive you away from God's presence. In fact, sin should drive you into God's presence. Because sin right now, because of the cross, is not an issue. It has been already dealt with. The first thing that the worshippers see when they approach the tabernacle would be the ashes of the burnt sacrifice. Now, what are ashes? If you look at the Hebrew dictionary, it means uh, the final product of a burnt sacrifice. Say, final product. In other words, your sin has been dealt with. So how should we respond to the sin that we are conscious in our life? It should flood you with gratitude. It should flood you with praise. There's a way to respond, to prepare our heart. Uh, the first way to prepare our heart, even from the altar of burnt sacrifice, you can see that in Zacchaeus. Even as Zacchaeus received grace, he was flooded with gratitude. He said, half my property I give away. And whatever I cheated, I return back double. How come Zacchaeus was able to do that? Because Zacchaeus received grace. You recall, Jesus looked up to Zacchaeus, was up on the tree. Jesus said, come down. I'm going to be in your house. I'm going to be dining with you. Zacchaeus received grace. So when you receive your forgiveness, so important, uh, not to be filled with guilt and condemnation because of Christ. You receive your forgiveness. The more you receive your forgiveness because of what Christ has done, not because of what you did. How long? Uh, six hours of confession of your sin. It's not about your uh, work. It's about His work. The more you receive His grace, how do we respond? Be filled with gratitude. One of the other ways to be filled with gratitude is to praise. Look at Psalm 100. Psalm 100 verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. So it's here, filled with praise. But Pastor, I cannot sing. I'm always out of key. It's okay, because God didn't ask you to sing with the right key. God said, make a joyful noise. As long as you can make a joyful noise, your heart is focused on God, God accepts it. Praise Him. You know, some people, they come to church, they're always late. The boss, I'm come just for the word. And I, I notice some people from other churches, they come just for the word. They will just come just before <laughs> the sermon starts. And it's great. Better than not coming. <laughs> but you don't know what you miss. Because it's not just the word. The word is important. It's crucial. At least you come for the word. I thank God for that. But you're missing out so much. What are you missing? Psalm 18 tells us. Psalm 18 verse 29. God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He is a shield for all who look to Him for protection. Wow, we come to Him for protection. How many of us know God put a unique shield in your life? So your worship experience involves praising Him. So if you miss the worship period of the service, you are missing out the shield. Look at verse 32. God arms me with strength and He makes my way perfect. Wow! God arms you with strength, making your way perfect. So if you just come for the word, you're going to miss out something significant that's going to strengthen your life. So the first way to prepare our heart, as we come through the cross, look back, is the, the burnt sacrifice is the picture of the cross. It should flood you with gratitude. That's why giving is part and parcel of worship. 
uh, giving to the miracle seed, giving out tithes and offering, it is an indication that you have received grace, like Zacchaeus did, because he received grace, received that forgiveness. He said, man, I, uh, I'm still flooded with sin and guilt and condemnation. Show that you have not received, received grace, and you're not going to be able to give because you have not received grace. So number one, you got to receive your forgiveness even as you come. Don't be plagued with guilt and condemnation. Number two way to prepare your heart is the next item is a wash basin. You look up, you see a picture of the wash basin. And this is where the priests and the Levites, after having cut and slaughtered the lamb and the bull, can you imagine they will be covered with all kinds of uh, perhaps fat and blood, dirt. And this is where we need the second way to prepare our heart as we prepare our heart to receive God's voice, to hear His voice, is to wash away all the distractions. It could be worry, it, should be, it could be fear, it could be anger, it could be uh, resentment. How many must know that when you're angry at something or somebody, hey, you are hindering your blessing. That's where the second way to prepare is to sing song like, what a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, he's the peace that floods my heart. So, Focusing on his peace, because his peace, Colossians tells us. Colossians 3 verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Wow. How many of us know that his peace is a primary way that God guides us? If you've got something, perhaps a business deal or a, a job you want to take, you don't feel the peace. Well, it is a clear indication. God said, don't go that path. Don't take up that business deal. Don't enter into that particular contract. God giving you that uh, check, that heaviness. But sometimes this peace can be confused because Jesus talked about the world kind of peace in John chapter 16. John 14 verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Wow, how many must know that the world can also give a kind of peace? In other words, men are mine is worldly. You can feel a sense of uh, uh, peace, but actually it's not God kind of peace. So that's where we need to wash our mind, wash our inner thinking, because Hammer must know wrong thinking leads to wrong living, and uh, Hammer must know that it's going to affect your feeling of that peace which uh, brings us to the other way to hear his voice, which is the lamb stand. One of the first things that you will notice when you enter the uh, tabernacle, uh, if you are the priest, you've got a privilege to go to the holy place, the, the first thing you will notice is the lamb stand. And in the tabernacle, it's pitch darkness. You can't see anything. The only source of light. Somebody says, oh, Pastor, how come the worship service is so dark? Try to <laughs> recreate the atmosphere of a tabernacle worship experience so that your focus is on God, not one another. Someone that you don't like. Something that, someone that disturbs you. Someone that uh, irritates you. You don't want to see him. You just want to see God. So that light shows you the way. So the third way to prepare your heart to hear his voice is to focus on his way. Say his way, not our way. See, every problem that you are facing even right now, God already got a solution. But how do we know that solution? Well, as we come to him, as we seek him and focus on his way, not our way. Because sometimes we're so obsessed with what we wanted, we can have a false sense of happiness and joy. The kidding is to focus on him. Proverbs 1, verse 5. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. But I'm really very wise. Well, if you're wise, add to your learning. In other words, even if you're a man of God, you need something, seek someone else for advice. That's what even David, man of God, he wrote so many Psalms. The vast majority of the psalm. He has a close relationship with God. He is a man after God's heart. But you see, 
he seeks God's counsel. Not just his own feeling, not just his peace, but he also seeks the counsel of Nathan, the prophet. One time Nathan said, oh, go ahead. God wants you to build his house. And later on, it was proven he was wrong. Later on, Nathan came to David and said, hey, you're not the one. Your son is going to be the one. But right now, you can prepare all the things that's needed for your son to build his house. So sometimes, even men of God can be wrong. This is why when you want to make a major decision, it's important to get a few witnesses. That's what uh, Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 29. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. Even in the New Building Project, every week we're giving you a prophecy from different men of God, so that they all together can be an added witness to what God wants to say, to confirm. So a major decision in life, it's important to seek God. I recall the story of uh, Catherine Kuhlman, the joy related, in the, even as she was preaching in the youth service, how Catherine Kuhlman was so, such an anointed lady. He just walk, just walk past you, you fall under the power of God. Tremendous healing, tremendous miracle, but they make a bad choice. Got into a relationship with this evangelist, they have a totally different vision in life. Catherine Kuhlman is a woman of grace, she speaks grace, but this man was uh, focusing on the Mosaic law, very uh, condemning, judgmental, totally different flow. Not just because the person is a believer, doesn't mean it's okay to marry. You've got to have the same calling. And Karen Kuhlman make a bad choice. On top of that, even though that guy preaches the Mosaic law, he <laughs> didn't follow the law. He was very married, he got divorced, and left his children, he got married to Karen Kuhlman. Uh, as a result of that was six years of hell for Catherine Kuhlman. Six years of hell. Because she said, she, she go against all the advices that she got, all the godly advices. But she felt good. That is a worldly kind of a peace. So the, the lampstand, the third way to prepare our heart, is to realize that God is the only source of life. Not we. Huh? The next item uh, in the tabernacle is a table of show bread, which is, of course, the word of God. Uh, bread of life. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. And the word of God is the bread of life. And how we must know that 90% of what you needed in life is already in the word. Pastor, I'm praying whether I should honor my father and mother. The Bible says, honor them. Don't just go for your holiday and chuck your children with mother or father. Send your mother and father for the holiday. You stay home, take care of your children. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Oh, Pastor, I don't have the money. Yeah, when your mother and father raise you up, send you to the best school, they take additional job, they borrow money just to send you to school. Can't you send your parents to a holiday? And other people say, Amen. Amen. Honor your father and mother. Pastor, I, I pray whether I should send my uh, mother and father for a holiday. I don't have the money. Don't pray, just give. Huh? Hallelujah. Because when you want to, you have a way. Because it is for your benefit that it may, you may live long in the land that the Lord your God has provided that all may go well with you. The only commandment with a promise. Amen. Pastor, I'm praying whether I should love my wife. Cut it. The Bible says, love your spouse as unto the Lord. Also, I'm praying that I should be giving the miracle seed, that amount. Hey, the chances are, when you hear a voice to give, is from God. Amen. The devil will never ask you to give. But I'm confused. God wants me to give this amount, but I feel uh, God also wanted me to give a higher amount. The chances are, the higher amount is from God, because the devil will never ask you to give more. And all the people say, Amen. Can I say, Ouch? All right. Oh, Pastor, I'm trying to reach out, but I'm not sure whether that person is ready. What does the word say? Jesus Christ himself said, open your eye to see the few already ripe on the harvest. When you feel, oh, that person is not ready, I'm not going to ask them for the Christmas event. I'm not going to ask them for the Blaze event this Saturday. The snow blaze. Oh, they're not ready. Hey. See beyond. The field 
already ripe on the harvest. So when you have a prompt thing to reach out, that is definitely from God. Because the devil never prompts you to reach out. So what is already in the word, go for it. Because how many of us know the Bible tells us God's word is absolutely reliable? Psalms 12. Psalms 12 verse 6. The Lord's words are absolutely reliable. They are as untainted as silver purified in a furnace on the ground where it is thoroughly refined. Now, the Bible is not a book on signs. But when it touches on signs, it's accurate. For example, the Bible says, life is in the blood. Long before medical doctors discovered the importance of blood tests. One time uh, in the 1400s, a lot of sailors are afraid to sail around the world because they think the earth is flat. Because if you sail, sail, and then boom, they've dropped into some kind of a bottomless pit. As that Christopher Columbus that got around the world. Because he believed the earth is not flat, as many of the thinking was at that time. Because he is a man of God. He read the word. And he found it out in Isaiah. Isaiah 40 verse 22. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Wow, he sits above the circle. Long before scientists discovered the earth is round. The Bible already said in Isaiah. And Job, even amazing, huh? Job is the oldest book in the Bible, 4,000 years old, the time of Abraham. And Job already told us years before, during the time when the greatest Greek philosophers, right, the greatest Greek philosopher of the day said the earth seated on Hercules, or a giant turtle. Long before that, Job already told us that the earth, look at Job. Job 26 verse 7, he hangs the earth on nothing. On nothing. <laughs> Space. How many of us know God's word is reliable? 90% of what you need is already there. There are times in which I go through challenging situations, and I read the word that day, that day word minister to me. Hammer must know it's not by chance because God is in control of chance. So when you open up the word, be attentive to the word of God because the word of God will take us beyond what you can uh, in your limited human capacity. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. Medical doctor tells us in the bone marrow, they produce about 200 billion red blood cells. Hey, the bone marrow is one of the most creative part of your being. And God's word touches that. So in other words, as you listen to God's word, you've got creative ideas. Now with the, the Bible, very good. Yeah, the Bible reader, they have the audio Bible. So when I sleep, I get out in the middle of the night, cannot sleep, just on the audio Bible, and I listen to it. And, and I found a lot of creative ideas coming out of that. And uh, meditate on his word and write notes. And because why? Psalm 119 tells us, Psalms 119 verse 18. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. I just check up this word, uh, I think this morning. Uh, the word wondrous is amazing. It means extraordinary. Is it extraordinary? It means to go beyond the natural. In other words, your natural ability, uh, your natural understanding. So God's word, now I'm asking you to kiss your brain goodbye, but God's word will take you beyond your natural ability. It will take you beyond your understanding. And, uh, and the key thing for us is to meditate and to write down what you uh, learn. Look at Psalm 102 verse 18. This will be written for the generation to come, that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. How many must know that the, uh, uh, it was written that for the generation to come. Now, the word generation in the Hebrew very interesting. This morning when I found out, it also means the next season in life. The next period in your life. So when you read right now, you may not feel that it applies to your situation. Months down the line, you read it again, 
it apply perfectly. Because the next season, God prepares you for the next season in life. So, unfortunately, uh, many of us forget 90% of what we heard in 72 hours. It's very bad news for us preachers because we spend 40 hours at least prepare one message every Sunday. At least. And you guys forget it in three days. Not fair. <laughs> Unless, of course, you write it down. I heard the testimony of Rick Warren. He's one of the uh, pastors of a large church, one of the largest churches in the States. The Lord spoke to him. Now, he is a Baptist preacher. Baptist people are not used, to, not used to saying the Lord say this, the Lord says that. Right? Baptist. And Rick Warren said, the Lord spoke to him one time. Don't cast pearl before swine. And Rick Warren said, oh God, <laughs> I think you're referring to the Pharisees, huh? The Lord says, no, I'm referring to you. And he was very shocked. Don't cast pearl before swine. I'm one of the swine. And God doesn't want to cast the pearl. Why, Lord? And God said to Rick Warren, because you don't even bother to write down what I spoke to you. It's important for us to write down what we hear in the message. To write down with your pencil, and nowadays, no need pencil in your application with your finger. And uh, this uh, last week, I hear another preacher. I was with my phone, and I just typed inside the box in the app, and I was able to email and copy and paste into a file, which I can go back there. In the next season in life, a uh, hundred months though, it's going to speak to us. So write down, because God say, you're not taking care of what I've given to you. Why should I giving, keep giving you pearls? Uh, and God said to Rick Warren, don't cast pearl before swine, because you let them fall away. Because if you don't write it down, next three days, you're going to forget everything you learn. So write it down. And uh, number five, the next item, the fifth item, uh, is the altar of incense, which is prayer. That's where the fifth way, the sixth way to prepare your heart to hear from Him is to ask. And nothing is beyond what you can ask. Just share to Him honestly your feeling, your vision, your dream, what you want, what kind of a job that you wanted. Share to Him your hurt, your anger. Don't hide. God already knows. Just release all your hurt, or even your fear. Lord, I'm just worried sick. I can't pay the bill. I'm fearful. Tell him that. And tell him the struggles that you have. Don't pretend you overcome everything. God, I, I, I just overwhelmed by this temptation. I just can't overcome. I need your help. And I must know, ask for wisdom and you could get the wisdom. So that is incense. So the fifth way uh, is to ask. And then the next, the sixth way, is the veil. The, remember when Christ died for us on the cross, the curtain of the temple was broken from top down. And the book of Hebrew tells us, Hebrews 10 verse 19, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body. Today, the will is the communion you're taking every Sunday, which is the body and the blood of Christ that bring you access, give you the confidence. So in other words, when you take communion, what is the purpose of the communion? I know many churches have spent a period of time examining their sin. They're focusing on their sin. But what is the purpose of the Holy Communion? Jesus himself tells us. Matthew 26, verse 28. This is my blood for the coven of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Wow. The blood was poured out for what? Not the consciousness of sin, but the what? Shut it out. In other words, everybody the communion, conscious not of your sin, but conscious of your forgiveness. Not fill your heart with guilt because it's already paid. Not fill your heart with grief because you're focusing on self. And then you're grief. Oh, I'm, I'm still so bad, full of regret or the ugly thing you've ever done. God already know. But when you're flooded with grief, you're focused on self, just like Judas did. 
And that grief drove him to commit suicide. But it should flood you with gratitude. Every time you take communion, when you're conscious of God's forgiveness, be conscious of what he has done. You're going to be flooded with gratitude like Mary. You'll be a giver. You'll be able to hear right, to give the right thing, and giving something that is going to impact generations. And the last thing that you're going to notice is the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is a picture of the presence of God. And you notice that these are two seraphim. They're not ordinary uh, angels. They are the heavenly security God. Because after Adam had sinned, God placed the cherubim to keep people from God's presence because it's great. If any one of us in our sin not dealt with come to God's presence, we drop dead. So the cherubim are there to protect us. You know, they keep us away. But after the Resurrection Watch Superbook, Woman, why are you weeping? They have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? You notice that the Superbook is very accurate. Very, very accurate. You see how the angels were being positioned? You saw? Can we watch it again? The super book again? How, I want you to take a look on how the angels were positioned. <laughs> look at the angels, the way they look at each other. Exactly like the cherubim. These angels that the woman saw actually are the cherubim. But instead of keeping them away, because the cherubim saw blood. And because the cherubim saw blood, it was a voice of welcome. And the voice that came to Mary, listen. Woman, why are you weeping? <laughs> they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb. And we why don't know where... Why are you weeping? How many must know... There is no need to cry before God's presence. And, uh, and then the Lord appeared to Mary. And we don't know where they have put him. Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? If you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary. Not voice of condemnation because of the blood. Jesus Christ is the propitiation. Uh, but the word propitiation means he makes us favorable. Not just your sin has been forgiven, you now have God's favor. And Amen. God is able now to meet with you, speak with you, and bless you. And uh, Jewish tradition tells us the first thing that the high priest does when the blood was acceptable, found to be acceptable, the high priest speak in a language he's never learned. The tradition don't understand. What is that? Hey, we all know that it's praying in tongues. The first thing that happens when the Holy Spirit comes is they pray in other tongues. One of the key ways that God speaks to us as we pray in tongues. And let it be a gentle tongue. Because if you're very loud in your tongue, you're not going to be able to hear his voice because it would be drowned by your own voice. So gentle tongue, gentle worship. Am am amazing uh, passage. Uh, I never shared this before, I think, here. Uh, is a passage in Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, verse 21. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. Wow. Your ears will hear a word behind you. You know, for a long time, I don't understand why we hear God's voice from behind. 
Until I found out this study by the University of Pennsylvania, by a very renowned professor, he's not even a believer, and they begin a test having brain scan of people praying in tongues. They find the frontal lobe is not active. The frontal lobe is the, the thinking part, the analytical part. So maybe we have a blink with all kind of problem. We think, and the way the place we think is the front part, which is the 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 analysis part of your brain. And you notice God speaks from behind, not the frontal lobe. When you pray in tongue, this is not active. The brain scan should look up. Uh, you see, uh, when people pray in tongue, even when a person meditate, it's still active. But all the time that is not active, and the person pray in tongue. This is done by the non-believer. Andrew Newberg and from the 2006 University of Pennsylvania study reported in the New York Times. The killing problem is that we can't hear his voice is because we focus on our mind. But God speaks us from behind. Why? Not the frontal lobe. <laughs> As you pray in tongue, a very gentle way, you find God speaks to us. But the killing is Pastor, I don't know why I prayed that I didn't get anything. Have you prepared yourself, your heart? The six simple ways, very practical way. As you go into town, you find God speaking to us, not with our mind, but a lot, and sometimes in the most unlikely moment. The blueprint comes. You may be plagued with a perhaps a problem in your business, problem in your relationship. You don't know what to do. You know what? As you pray and relax, not asking you to kiss your brain goodbye, but God wants to take you beyond. You know, the, the wonderful thing is, is beyond the natural, beyond your understanding, take you beyond. This is simple key on how seven ways to prepare our heart to hear Him. And by the way, when He speaks, our words are blessing because what Christ did for us on the would you uh, pray this prayer together with me? Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for being my good shepherd. Right now, I receive you into my life as my shepherd, as my Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know even I make bad choices, you are with me, you are for me, and you will sort things out for me because you are the good shepherd who have already laid down your life for me. And all the people say, Amen. Say that prayer and want to know more or have any feedbacks, please write to us.